So today we are going to talk about antibiotics, right? Especially antibacterial drugs, right? And when we talk about antibacterial drugs, you know there are many different types of antibacterial drugs which work in different ways on the bacteria. The first group of drugs which we will discuss is those antibiotics which inhibit the synthesis of bacterial cell wall, right? The, which antibiotics we are going to discuss? The group of antibiotics which inhibit the synthesis of cell wall. Such antibiotics are also called cell wall active agents. Cell wall active agents, right? You must be knowing there are some very important drugs which are in this group. Can you tell me the names of the drugs which are cell, bacterial cell wall synthesis inhibitors? Cycloserine, Bisi, Prasin, Venco, yes, Venco, Mycin, yes, and Beta, Lactam. group of antibody antibiotics beta lactam group of antibiotics and in the beta lactam group of antibiotics what antibiotics are present over there yes there are four very important members at least four of them you should know yes penicillins yes cephalosporins Yes, please. Penicillins, cephalosporins, imipanum group, which is basically a group of carbapenem, and yes, carbapenem, and estreonam, estreonam. Now, out of all this group, the very very commonly used is the penicillin group, isn't it? Yeah. And cephalosporin group. And of course, in certain situations, other drugs are also used. Right? So all of these drugs, groups, cycloserine, basitracin, vancomycin, beta lactam, antibiotics, such antibiotics which have beta lactam ring. They are penicillin, cephalosporins, carbipenem, and estronam. Right? We are going to basically our initial discussion is about this group of antibiotics fine before we really go into detail of these antibiotics I'm interested that we should know what is the normal structure of bacterial cell wall and how the bacterial cell wall is synthesized then we will really understand how these antibiotics disrupt the synthesis of bacterial cell wall now basically most of the bacteria are divided into two groups gram positive and gram negative right most of bacteria there are some exceptions also we will not talk about them now so there are gram positive bacteria and there are gram negative, negative bacteria let us suppose as an example of gram positive bacteria I put a staphylococcus here right gram positive bacteria and as gram negative bacteria I can put here yes pseudomona okay or you can put E. coli that is very friendly you have a lot of it E. coli is here and now this is the cytoplasmic membrane of staphylococcus this is the cytoplasmic membrane of E. coli in this diagram I have not made the cell wall of gram positive bacteria or cell wall of gram negative bacteria right now how the cell wall of gram positive bacteria is different from gram negative remember gram positive cell wall has a big difference from gram negative bacteria cell wall and due to this differences in the cell wall the drugs work on the gram positive are maybe different and drugs working on the gram negative may be different right so what is the difference in the structure of cell wall of gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria raise your hands please thickness of, 
thickness of the dress. So our friend is telling that the differences in thickness. Which one is thicker? Gram positive is thicker. And you think gram negative cell wall is thinner. So due to this reason, mm, yes, due to this reason, antibiotics, penicillins, suppose penicillin G, should be more effective on gram positive or more effective on gram negative? So, but uh, you say gram positive. You understand? How I, I'm trying to put a very basic concept in your mind. I asked you what is the difference? You say this is a thicker cell wall and this is thinner cell wall. I bring a question that penicillin G, it is more effective on gram positive or negative? Of course, all of you know it is more on gram positive and less on gram negative. Why this difference is there? Yes, please. If you can answer this, then you really know the difference of the cell wall, otherwise not. <laughs> yes. Anyone? Okay, before you tell me the very new things, let me tell you what is the basic structure of cell wall of the gram positive and then I will tell you how it is different from gram negative. In gram positive uh, bacteria, what really happens, cell wall consists of two components primarily. Number one, there are sugar backbones. What are there? There are sugar backbones and those sugar backbones I am going to make blue. These are sugar backbones. I will show the detailed structure of it in a short time. These are the sugar backbones. Now these uh, sugar backbones which are there, of course they are made of carbohydrates. These, these sugar backbones are cross-linked. You know they are cross-linked through peptide chains. What is there? Peptide. peptide chains. Sugar is also called glycan. What is it called? Glycan. So this whole molecule which is making this cell wall, this is called peptidoglycan. What is it called? Peptidoglycan. So cell wall of gram positive bacteria is mainly made of sugar backbones cross-linked with, yes, cross-linked with peptide chains, cross-linked with peptide chains and due to this reason they are called that gram-positive bacteria have cell wall made of peptidoglycans, is that right? How many molecules of peptidoglycan make one cell wall? Anyone who knows the answer? It's a funny question, but still it will tell me how, how clear your concepts are. How many molecules of peptidoglycan make one cell wall? One. Zishan is telling it's one, and answer is right. It is just one molecule, it's a many, many peptidoglycan polymerized into one macro polymer. Okay? Peptidoglycan, just this is one macro polymer of what? Peptidoglycan. And this is making gram-positive cell wall. But when you go to the gram-negative cell wall, there is also peptidoglycan. And as you will feel for a while that your friend was very right, there is also, what are these? Glycan backbones. And what are these? Yes, please. Peptide cross links. Right? So again, this is also peptidoglycan. So you see, gram-positive has peptidoglycan as well as gram-negative have a cell wall of peptidoglycan. And as your friend was telling, it is very thick and that is looking very thin. But the clinically important thing is something else. Gram-negative bacteria have an additional outer membrane which is not present in gram-positive. Look at this beautiful membrane. This is an additional membrane, lipid membrane, which is present on gram negative and which is not present in gram positive. positive. We call it outer membrane. So outer membrane is an additional and very special and unique feature of gram negative bacteria but not a feature of gram positive. This is the most important difference 
in gram positive and negative bacteria in the cell wall difference the reason being this is clinically very very important difference number one let me tell you how the penicillins work actually penicillin binding proteins are present here they are attached with what is this what is this cytoplasmic membrane what is this cytoplasmic membrane and penicillin binding proteins are present on where cytoplasmic membrane it means if penicillins or beta lactam antibiotic have to attack these proteins is that right if penicillins have to attack these proteins then as i told you the beta lactam antibiotics have a special four member ring which is called what is this ring penicillin. beta lactam ring suppose this is the structure of penicillin but and this special ring is called what is this ring beta lactam ring and this is the ring which basically interact with penicillin binding proteins target proteins now you must know where exactly the penicillin binding proteins are present in bacteria penicillin binding proteins are present in bacteria on the outer side of the cytoplasmic membrane it means that penicillin has to go all the way yes up to here and then penicillin will bind with the proteins you are getting that claro now this peptidoglycan network is highly porous it is just like a network it is highly porous so even larger antibiotics can go up to that and attack the protein am i right but here in case of gram negative bacteria still penicillin binding proteins are present on inner cytoplasmic membrane membrane it means penicillin or beta lactam antibiotics need to go up to this place but the trouble is there waiting for you that this is the beta lactam antibiotic it want to go but outer membrane is there outer membrane is what it is made of lipids and because it is made of lipid it is not highly porous is that right due to this reason many antibiotic which are larger bulky their molecular structure is very bulky or their molecular structure is very very highly charged can they pass through this membrane no so they cannot act on gram negative bacteria even though gram negative bacteria have special mechanisms to transport certain substances through its outer membrane and the, these special things which are present in the outer membrane these are called porins what are these porins these are special this is lipid membrane with protein pores and what are these pores called please porins what are these pores called porins right so actually gram negative bacteria have an outer membrane and in the outer membrane they have porins is that right and any and cell wall active agent which has to go to the target proteins it has to pass through the porins, porins. and if some antibody can not pass through the porin can they really act on the gram negative bacteria no no now i think you got your answer yes. that penicillin g is very bulky molecule because it is bulky molecule penicillin g right can go through this porous peptidoglycan of the gram positive and can reach up to the target but penicillin g cannot effectively pass through the porins so it is not very effective because it cannot reach up to the target protein i hope you have your answer then another group of penicillins are very very narrow spectrum penicillin let's continue discussion that i put penicillins here penicillins and penicillins are basically two types narrow spectrum and wide wide, wide spectrum it's so easy to think in these terms narrow spectrum and 
wide spectrum it is killing less organisms this is killing many different type of organisms but the question is that why narrow spectrum is narrow and why wide spectrum is wide in narrow spectrum there are two there are natural right penicillins and they are very 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 narrow spectrum narrow spectrum it means natural penicillins are moderate spectrum out of narrow these are less narrow and these are very very narrow spectrum you are understanding now classically in narrow spectrum we put the drug like yes please penicillin g and penicillin v is that right penicillin g and penicillin v these are natural penicillins because they were originally derived from the special mold is that right you know fleming okay alexander the alexander but not the alexander the great okay so alexander fleming so actually penicillin g was you know discovered and found in during the second world war and then it was utilized it is still being used this is still one of the one of the very commonly used drug and very safe still now penicillin g and penicillin v they are having moderately large structure why because i have made this is a penicillin structure on the side of the penicillin it is just like a beautiful house you know this penicillin is a beautiful house and there is a side room here in the side room you have the jail in which you capture the penicillin binding protein and there is a special here antenna this is called r group so basically penicillin structure is one big ring with one small ring the small ring is beta lactam ring and on the side you can attach a special r group are you understanding me this is a basic structure most important structure out of this is this ring because this is the ring which is going to attack the penicillin binding protein if this ring is destroyed this molecule will fail you are understanding it that is why those enzymes which destroy this ring they are called beta lactamases because they break down the beta lactam ring is that right and this is required this integrity of this ring is required for the antibiotic action of the beta lactam antibiotics am i clear no problem up to this now in case of natural penicillin the molecule is moderately bulking because it is moderately bulky right it can easily go natural penicillins it can easily go to yes where gram positive but usually in gram negative they are not very successful because they are larger molecules in many gram negative bacteria natural penicillins cannot enter through porins that is why you know that natural penicillins like penicillin g and penicillin v they are more effective in gram positive cocci they are more effective in gram positive gram positive bacilli they are more uh, they are more effective in gram positive cocci as well as in gram positive bacilli yes they act on the gram positive bacilli they act on few gram negative cocci because some gram negative cocci have a slightly larger porin they are slightly larger porin but most of the gram negative bacilli have very narrow porin so penicillin g or v fail on the gram negative bacilli and of course you know that penicillin g also work on yes most of the gram positive also some gram negative cocci but not gram negative bacilli right and one very big group of organisms important not very big but important again i'm trying to put something in your mind what i'm trying to tell you the natural penicillin is moderately bulky they are not very smart but they are not very obese and they can go through most of the they can reach up to the most of penicillin binding proteins of the gram positive bacilli and cocci both in gram negative they can go through the porins of gram negative cocci but not gram negative bacilli is that right 
plus these antibiotics can also go to please tell me there is one organism which produces a nasty disease if you get it you don't like to tell others you got it and he knows it he doesn't like to tell to anyone syphilis yes right triponema clydem spirochetes or spirochetes whatever you call it so natural penicillins can work mainly on gram positive cocci they work on gram positive bacilli they work on gram negative cocci they fail on these drug fail on gram negative bacilli they cannot work on them and they also work on these yeah what are these spirochetes or spirochetes right you know spirochetes are like triponema pallidum is that right do you have triponema pallidum right now man you don't have it doctor we do you have triponema pallidum yeah yeah in your body not in your friend's body you don't have it anyone here who has triponema pallidum my friend all of you have it let me i wear just open your mouth and you will know it actually triponema pallidum is present in between the normally it is present in between the gums and the teeth the beauty is that this triponema pallidum is not pathogenic thank god thank god you feel relieved isn't it <laughs> right you feel relieved because the pathogenic triponema pallidum which really produces syphilis right that is sexually transmitted all of you must be knowing right so anyway let's come back that is part of the normal flora my friend leptospira yeah triponema is a triponema pallidum leptospira yeah icterohemorrhagica right this is second type of spirochete which is responsible for which disease wheels disease wheels disease which come from the rats wow. oh my god right and any other spirochete you know there is another spirochete which come from the ticks another spirochete disease which come from the ticks the disease is called lime disease lime. what is the organism borrelia burgdorferi right but we will keep our discussion limited to that uh, penicillin g is effective especially in syphilis actually one shot of penicillin will cure the syphilis right okay but when we come to very very narrow spectrum look very very narrow spectrum are only yes this was natural penicillin group now we are going to talk about very very narrow spectrum what penicillins right they are so bulky molecules that they only go into staphylococcus but they even fail on many other gram positive and negative so that is why very very narrow very very narrow spectrum penicillins are simply called yes they are called anti staphylococcal staphylococcal yes penicillins have you heard of it because even though other penicillins can also attack the staphylococci but this is a special group which specially specifically attack the staphylococcus is that right this is a very heavy molecule now question is that why doctors made this a very special group that there is a full group of penicillins which are anti staphylococcal there are two reasons for that one reason is that you should remember they are working on staphylococcus and they are not effective in other bacteria so well because these antibiotics this penicillin has a very very heavy r group very very large r group and it is such a large r group it cannot enter into th mesh work of most of the positive or even none of the negative that is why but it mainly attack the staphylococci so it is called anti staphylococcal what penicillins can you tell me few names of that Yes, please tell me methicillin, methicillin which is not being used now clinically, nephcillin, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin, cloxacillin, and 
Fluke logs are slain. Have you heard of them? Fluke logs are slain. So all of them are specially called anti what? Anti staphylococcal penicillins, right? So anti staphylococcal penicillins. When we talk about specifically and specially talk about methicillin, nephcillin, cloxacillin, and dicloxacillin or decloxacillin, right? Now, these are called specially anti-staphylococcal. One reason I told you because they are so bulky, there are many bacteria cell walls, they cannot pass through because target proteins are present on the which place? Cytoplasmic membrane. And because penicillin binding proteins are present on the cytoplasmic membrane, penicillin have to go through the cell walls, right? So number one, this thing. But there is another reason why they are called anti-staphylococcal. Are you interested to know that or not? Yeah. These drugs have a very special advantage over many other drugs to kill the staphylococcal. Staphylococci have become very dangerous bacteria. You know what they have done? They started making penicillin cutters. Many staphylococci are producing enzymes and those enzymes can destroy the this basement of this small gel let me tell you if this is a penicillin molecule what is this ring beta. this ring is beta lactam right and what really happens that this staphylococcus or many staph not all but many staphylococci produce special type of very dangerous molecule they secrete them and this dangerous molecules which are secreted by penicillins these dangerous molecules are very bad you know why they can yeah you know what they are doing they are cutting the beta lactam ring especially at the basement if you should, yeah Many staphylococci produce the enzymes and these enzymes can go and break down the beta lactam ring. So when your penicillin is approaching there, you are throwing the penicillin on bacteria and bacteria is throwing those dangerous what? Enzymes. And those enzymes will leak through this porous peptidoglycan and go out and destroy the penicillin even before the penicillin reaches there. Are you understanding? These molecules are called penicillinases because they break down the penicillin. They are called penicillinases. So many of the, or because they break the beta lactam ring, they can also be called beta lactamases. So many staphylococci are producing beta lactamases or penicillinases. These beta lactamases break down the beta lactam ring. And because they break down the beta lactam ring, so penicillin G or V cannot be effective. Are you understanding? Yeah. So we needed some very special type of penicillin which, which can work against these bacteria. So what did we do? Very simple thing. You change this R group. You change this R group. You remember there was the R group here? Yeah. You put a different type of molecule here and that molecule should be wrapped around like this. What it is doing? It is protecting the beta lactam ring. This side chain is protecting the beta lactam ring. And now staphylococci which produce the beta lactamases, can their beta lactamase destroy beta lactam ring? No. So doctors produce a full new class of penicillins, which are some modified penicillins. And they put their R groups in such a way that R group, I don't need to go into detail what they are, but there are such additional groups on the side which protect the beta lactam ring from the beta lactamases. So in this way, all those staphylococci which are producing beta lactamases, these modified antibiotics could kill those bacteria because they were resistant to penicillinases. Am I clear? Now, the thing was that in this process you made the molecule smart or bulky? Bulky. So you lost the action on many other bacteria. 
So molecule convert into narrow spectrum. But specially effective for effective for staphylococci. So they are called very very narrow spectrum anti staphylococcal penicillins. That is what all these are: methicillin, nephcillin, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin, fucloxacillin, oxacillin, all of them. So do you think this should be grouped with this one? No. Penicillin G and penicillin V are natural, and beta lactam basement is not fortified. And penicillin G and penicillin V are very very susceptible to the attack of beta lactam bases. So penicillin G and V are narrow spectrum, narrow spectrum, natural. Beta penicillin is sensitive. Penicillin is sensitive penicillins. And when you compare it with the next group, where you have add a big R group, spectrum become more narrow. It was na natural, natural penicillins are narrow spectrum, but these modified penicillins are extremely narrow spectrum. Is that right? But they have special protection side chain to protect the beta lactam ring from penicillin is so they have were effective in those staphylococci which was producing what beta lactam ases so this group of drugs were considered a very good group of drugs and they were called what anti staphylococcal penicillin is anti staphylococcal penicillin and remember because they are really narrow so what are the spellings of narrow please tell me the spelling of narrow n a double r o double u double r should remind you resistant resistant against what resistance against the penicillin penicillinases so very narrow spectrum are very resistant to the penicillinases so they can work very effectively even against those staphylococci which produce penicillinases that's so simple is that right if you look at these important points related with it these days methicillin in usa is not used clinically because methicillin produces very severe nephritis. interstitial nephritis it damages the kidney so methicillin is mostly used these days you hear about it uh, when in the laboratory we are checking the sensitive sensitivity of staphylococci against certain drugs and you know there is a super bug there very dangerous bacteria called methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus so you hear in regard of that nephcillin is used but nef again remember nephcillin even though it is not as toxic as methicillin but still nephcillin can produce in some cases what nephritis interstitial nephritis nephcillin as what can you tell me the spelling of nephcillin Yes, N, N, A, nephcillin. This N, look at this N. It is which color? I put the red color in it. It should remind there is something dangerous about what? About nephcillin. N stands for N stands for nephritis. and n stands for neutropenia these are two pro big problem with nephcillin is it right then there are other drugs like cloxacillin dicloxacillin flucloxacillin right look at it there's a funny thing here there's o coming in this isn't it why this o is coming there to remind you they are available in oral form they are available in oral form is that right anyway so what this was something about now you are very clear about natural penicillin and very very narrow spectrum penicillins right okay a few words about these what is the real difference between penicillin g and penicillin v i'm about to be impressed the, the, the different way to use different way to use what different way Yeah, actually, penicillin G is usually given parenterally, intravenously, suppose, and penicillin V can be given orally. Why? 
Penicillin G is very big, it cannot enter from mouth or what? Yeah. Yeah, actually, look, penicillin G was the most primitive molecule, right? Penicillin G. This is structure of penicillin G. Actually, this is the point where, which was attacking? Penicillin A. And it is the same point where acid of the stomach attack. Penicillin A and so basically penicillin G, this area is totally unprotected. It is not only attacked by the penicillin ases and beta lactamases of course, but it is also attacked by the HCL in stomach. So when you take penicillin G orally, it is uh, beta lactam ring is destroyed by the acid in the stomach of course and then orally it is not so effective. Are you understanding? That is why usually we prefer to give penicillin G intravenously or parenterally. Is that right? Intravenously very commonly given. Am I right? But in penicillin V, there is again R group which protected not much from the penicillin A's but does protect the point where acid attack. Let me tell you more clearly. This is a beta lactam ring. This is the point where penicillin A's attack. What is it? And this is the point where acid attack. The real difference between penicillin G and penicillin V is its R group come up to this level. It protects the molecule from acid but does not protect the molecule from penicillin A's. So in this way, uh, penicillin V is acid stable. That is why it can be taken orally. And if you remember, penicillin V can be taken orally. It is used in which conditions? You should know two conditions in which penicillin V is very commonly used. Yes, my friends, penicillin V. Okay, it is used in children. For which purpose, my friend? Uh, very commonly, penicillin V is given uh, for those children who are susceptible to rheumatic fever. You know, rheumatic fever is a complication in 3% of the population, not everyone. Due to? Pharyngitis by? Streptococcus, beta hemolyticus, Lansfield group A, rheumatogenic strains, not every strain. Look, if children suffer with sore throat, number one with streptococcus, and that streptococcus should be which, from which group? Beta hemolyticus. And should be belonging to Lansfield group A. Of which strain? Rheumatogenic strain. If some children are suffering with, for example, in a school, listen carefully. In a school, there are 100 children. Unfortunately, all those 100 children suffer with streptococcus, beta hemolyticus, Lansfield group A, rheumatogenic strain, pharyngitis. How many of them will develop rheumatic fever? I'm very good. Who is going to tell me? How many of them will develop the rheumatic fever? You don't know? Yeah? But uh, how much? Only 3%. Very good, Miguel. It's only 3%. Because 3% population is genetically pre-programmed, right, for the rheumatic fever if this specific organism produces sore throat. Is that right? We'll discuss into detail how it happens in video on the rheumatic fever. But let's come back. In children, we give penicillin V. Is that right? To prevent the oral infection by or pharyngeal infection by these bacteria for long term. We'll discuss in detail in rheumatic fever, right? Secondly, penicillin V is also given for oral infections in which there are mixed aerobic and anaerobic infections, dental infections. Penicillin V can also be used. But anyway, you know it, both of them are natural penicillins. Both of them are moderately heavy, right? And Penicillin G is not acid stable, so it is preferably given parenterally. Penicillin V is acid stable, that is why it can be given orally. orally. Then we went in the next group, very, very narrow spectrum, right? They are made so bulky that they can work only on staphylococci, but their side chains specially protect the beta lactam ring from the attack of beta lactam ages. So they are specially effective in those staphylococci which are, which are methicillin. You cannot be more wrong. 
oh my god you are saying that these drugs can be used in the bacteria staphylococci which are methicillin resistant no it can be used in those bacteria which are staphylococci which are penis producing penicillinase is that right because they are susceptible to methicillin is that right now let me tell you this thing actually originally when we started using the penicillin most of the staphylococci were sensitive to the drug and we were killing doctors were really wild right and they were killing the staphylococci without any human rights with the penicillin yes then staphylococci acquired the capability to release what penicillin penicillinases then our these drugs failed then we we responded to them we responded to the bug in an intelligent way we altered our weapon so their cutter fail and penicillinases try to attack but penicillinases fail and drugs still go and bind with what is this penicillin binding protein and such then we were very happy that these nasty uh, you can say bacteria which were producing streptococci which were producing penicillinases we can kill them with a special group of antibody called anti streptococcal penicillins then one day there was a the bad news bug decided to respond to our innovation and you know what bug did previously they were producing penicillinases and what we were doing we were protecting this thing and their weaponry attack fail we attack them well then some of those streptococci they really became unfair with us you know what did they do they played a foul game with us the foul in this game was they totally changed the structure of what is this funny thing penicillin binding protein and then methicillin nephcillin cloxacillin dicloxacillin fluoxacillin oxacillin all of them were given could they bind there and they failed and then doctor really got upset then they say there is a super bug came into action right that we can give the penicillins on which penicillin is cannot attack but still we cannot kill the bug and then we try to add to the penicillin clavulonic acid and other things still penicillins fail because clavulonic acid destroy penicillinase so doctors were really perplexed as confused as any confused bug so what has happened what is going on that those wonderful drugs which are specifically anti streptococcal the drugs are uh, not killing the streptococci and then they called this very nasty super bug is meth even even methicillin resistant staphylococcus that is why the name came what was the name methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus i prefer to call it even methicillin resistant mm -hmm. right because most of the staphylococcus were sensitive to methicillin here what did they do they alter the target protein this was the foul play they did with us right but we are also very naughty we came up with the vancomycin why vancomycin inhibit a step in disrupt the cell wall synthesis a step before these proteins were needed we'll talk about that later right how the other drug work but what i wanted to tell that anti streptococcal penicillins work on those streptococci which produce penicillinases but do not work on those streptococci which are methicillin resistant so you you understand why you were wrong right okay then another thing came some doctors said we want to really have penicillins which also work effectively on gram negative, negative. what the those doctor wanted they wanted to extend the spectrum this was the moderate spectrum here we narrowed the spectrum now they wanted to extend stretch the spectrum that penicillin should be modified in such a way that they not only work effectively on gram positive but they should work effectively on gram negative also now it's very easy to understand that group of wider spectrum wider spectrum penicillin right if you want them oh you know the drug yes ampicillin and amoxicillin 
why it is more wider spectrum why makes a great doctor yes why let me tell you listen what was the real theme the real idea was that we had natural penicillins we have already made very very uh, narrow spectrum anti streptococcal penicillins which were very bulky but we wanted some penicillin so that which can kill not only gram positive but can also extend their spectrum to gram negative and as you are so good doctors you know that gram negative and outer membrane and that is a permeability barrier for the many drugs and only drug only beta lactam drug which is going to work on the gram negative it has to pass through the pore in somehow cross the what is this thing cross the outer membrane and reach up to the penicillin binding protein so if you want some penicillin molecule to go through the pore ends it should be very heavy moderately heavy or smart smart so actually what did they do they just trim the molecule modified the molecule of penicillin make it a smarter penicillin like a model penicillin you have seen the model girls they are usually smart girls isn't it you have seen in your life you have only seen model girls they were model penicillins they made the penicillin which was smarter penicillin so smart penicillin which could sneak through the pore ends and of course if they could slip through the pore ends they could of course reach up to this point also so those penicillins which could of course they were smart penicillin i must say smart smart penicillin smart penicillins right they could not only attack gram positive but also could attack gram negative, negative. because they could attack the gram negative we say their spectrum is extended right they are wider spectrum so the typical example of such smart penicillins are yes please tell me ampicillin and amoxicillin right uh, amoxicillin amoxicillin and ampicillin right these are two typical extended spectrum penicillins these are smart penicillin they can slip through the porins so they have not only attack against the gram positive but they also attack the gram negative, negative. as you must be knowing that we should remember something that amoxicillin and ampicillin type drugs right they can help in gram negative bacteria also so you can write it here that they help what are the spelling of help e l so these amoxicillin or ampicillin helps helps to clear very special bug enterococci enterococci now you may be thinking what happened to dr najib why he is writing this strange type of statement like ampicillin helps to clear enterococci first of all i would concentrate what is meant by the enterococci and then helps look enterococci are gram post uh, enterococci are the cocci and most of the penicillin these penicillins fail on enterococci you know that right why these uh, penicillins fail on enterococci enterococci are gram positive or negative enterococci are gram positive or negative? negative negative okay thank you very much so it means they must be having porins and the porins are little tight because they are little tight so we needed smart penicillins or heavy penicillins smart. smart so actually amoxicillin or ampicillin type drugs can help to clear the enterococcal infection for example enterococcal urinary tract infections is that right but why i write here help okay help means that h stand for hemophilus influenza E is for E. coli. L is for Listeria monocytogenes. Is that right? Listeria monocytogenes is gram positive or negative? It is gram positive. It is gram positive, but of course others are gram negative. P is Proteus. P is Proteus. Never call it Pseudomona. This P here is Proteus. when you say pseudomona it means you don't know penicillins i will tell you why i am not calling it pseudomona in very few minutes of lecture you will be clear so hemophilus influenza e coli listeria monocytogenes what is this proteus 
and salmonella helps so ampicillin helps to clear enterococci even right where your earlier drug will fail natural penicillins may, may not be very effective v uh, very narrow spectrum penicillin anti staphylococcal penicillin may not be effective right but this smart ampicillin can help you to clear the enterococci is that right now out of this hemophilus influenza e coli proteus and salmonella gram negative and enterococci are gram negative listeria is the only one which is gram positive here and here i think i should remind you the gram negative bacteria have endotoxins and gram positive bacteria gram positive bacteria have endotoxins or not endotoxins people who believe only gram negative bacteria have endotoxin raise their hands have you heard of endotoxins lipopolysaccharide they are present in gram positive or negative people who believe it is in negative only raise their hand for practical purposes for practical purposes lipopolysaccharides which are having the endotoxins for practical purposes they are only present in gram negative that is why i asked you please tell me the structure of gram negative because lipopolysaccharides are the part of outer membrane because only gram negative bacteria have outer membrane that is why only gram negative bacteria have lipopolysaccharide and only gram negative bacteria can produce endotoxemia am i clear is that right but there is only one gram positive bacteria which has a little lipopolysaccharide or little endotoxin that only exception is listeria monocytogenes right all gram negative bacteria have special lipopolysaccharides in their outer membrane which are also called <laughs> which are also called endotoxins i will go into detail uh, you will see in, uh, this thing in detail in microbiology videos right what is lipopolysaccharide and endotoxins and how they work for a while you just trust me i'm right and only gram positive bacteria which has endotoxins is listeria monocytogenes look at it here it is still grouped with gram negative helps even though it is gram positive anyway so these were smart penicillins amoxicillin and ampicillin they were very smart do you think the model they are well covered or uh, under covered when you are beautiful you like to show isn't it and when you like to show sometimes you end up into troubles do you or not this is what really happens with this model penicillin amoxicillin and ampicillin they are have they are smart if they are very smart their side chains should be heavy or very little they should have a very small beautiful side chain so that they can slip through porins ampicillin and moxicillin are smart penicillins their side chains should be really very small right and due to this reason do you think they can protect their beta lactam ring can they protect their beta lactam ring so what happens they are very smart they love to expose and what is exposed there don't tell me anything nasty what is exposed there base of the beta lactam ring and who will attack from down there why you are smiling all this drug i'm talking about right what will attack there beta lactam beta lactam is so what you have to remember now that make stretching the spectrum has a price when you make the penicillins very smart they again become vulnerable to beta lactamases that is why with these drugs we add some other drug which can neutralize beta lactamases is that right for example with the, when we give amoxicillin with the amoxicillin we add another drug and that drug is called clavulonic acid clavulonic acid what clavulonic acid is doing you know what it is doing let me tell you look look for example this is a bacteria and which is producing what is this what is this what is this beta lactamase right what clavulonic acid is doing now beta lactamase 
scan what is the real worry that when we have made this penicillin very smart right the real worry is that if bacteria is producing beta lactamases or penicillinases these will attack this base of the drug and destroy the beta lactam ring ring destroyer is that right and this ring is not protected there so what we do with this drug we send another what another drug, drug. and that additional drug is that additional drug is what is this additional drug clavulonic acid clavulonic acid will fit over here and now what is this thing beta lactamases are busy with clavulonic acid and they cannot attack the beta lactam ring so there are these are called anti beta lactamase drugs anti beta lactamase drugs are clavulonic acid sulbactam and tazobactam there are three what are these three anti number 1 is clavulonic acid number 2 is sulbactam tazo bactam so what these drugs are doing these drugs these are the three friends which protect they go along with the penicillin right they are the bodyguards of penicillin they protect the penicillin from as you know some ladies are keeping bodyguards with them it's like that they protect the ladies from not ladies drug from <laughs> you know many models yes they need uh, what bodyguards models because you know, they are too beautiful and exposed also and their basement oh sorry this base of the ring is not uh, properly protected so for models should keep what bodyguards so these model antibiotics amoxicillin and ampicillin they should go with some bodyguard bodyguards are here clavulonic acid molecules which will destroy the attackers who are those attackers yeah other bodyguards are sulbactam and tazobactam you understand it right of course amoxicillin is coming with the name of amoxicillin with the with clavulonic acid is coming with the name of augmentin you know augmentin so what is augmentin amoxicillin which can kill gram positive with extended spectrum from gram negative with them these are very smart beautiful so we send the clavulonic acid with them is that right so what really happens that augmentin is there with ampicillin okay the bodyguard of amoxicillin is clavulonic acid who is the bodyguard of ampicillin sulbactam sulbactam this com combo is called augmentin and this combo is called ampicillin with sulbactam it is coming with which name in the market you people are practicing i am not <laughs> unasen have you heard of unasen 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 this is augmentin augmentina which you call it is that right so what are these whenever you hold unasin or augmentin you are sending a very smart beautiful penicillin which will not only attack the gram positive but also slip through the porins into gram negative, negative. and we are sending the bodyguards with them anti clavulonic uh, anti penicillinase drug like clavulonic acid or sulbactam am i clear okay so this is expand a uh, extended spectrum but there is one problem my friend there is one problem still there is an organism which produces green pus green pus actually what was happening doctors were very happy after having the extended spectrum penicillins along with the clavulonic acid they say okay we are killing many gram positive and many gram negative wow but there was another trouble sometimes surgeons will open the wound they look there and there is no wow because there is a green pus and surgeon face will become down why because he knows it was few years back not now about 10 15 years back whenever surgeon look at the green pus he knows he is in trouble because green pus was produced by an organism called pseudomona aeruginosa and pseudomona aeruginosa protected it wonderfully some people say pseudomona aeruginosa has very few porins very little porins and even those porins are very very tight even some authorities believe that practically pseudomona does not have porin due to this reason surgeon's face go down when he see the green pus 
you say, my God, if it is pseudomona, my extended spectrum formula will fail. My model antibiotic, model penicillin cannot reach there to the goal. When model fails, who will su succeed? What is your general knowledge? If model fails, who will succeed? Supermodel. <laughs> Where model fails, supermodel should become successful. You must be knowing models have extended spectrum. But supermodel have very extended spectrum. Every kind of male is something. Right? So then doctors made super, super smart penicillins. Right? And those super smart penicillins could work on many gram negative, including pseudomonas. And to remember these special feature of super smart penicillins, they call those penicillin anti pseudomonal penicillins. What they call them? Anti pseudomonal penicillins. So they were very, very smart penicillins. Smart penicillins. Or you can say, look here. Let's come back. They were natural penicillins. Natural penicillins were? Yes. It was. Moderate structure penicillin, moderate, moderate weight penicillin. Narrow spectra the UBs. These were smart, ampicillin, and, and these are super smart, super model. Super model. Model. This is housewife. <laughs> and here is the grandmother. Very UBs. Right? So super models are the penicillins which are very, very smart. Even they can go through very, very narrow porins and even they can destroy the pseudomonas. Right? And those were called anti-pseudomonal penicillins. Is that right? So these days when they look at the green pass, they're worried but not that much. They know we have anti-pseudomonal drugs. Of course, super models are very smart. Do you think they are attacked, vulnerable to attack or not? Yeah. Of course, he knows that. He keeps his eye there. Supermodels expose too much. Their R chain is very small. You are understanding? Supermodel is not like this. Even this is not there. You know it. Too beautiful. Too much exposure. So they are high risk of what? Attack by? Beta lactamases. So supermodels should have bodyguard or not? Sure. Sure. That is why they are also having bodyguards. For example, First I tell you what are the supermodels and then I will tell you their bodyguards. What are these supermodel drugs? Can you tell me? First of all, tell me the most powerful, most potent, what? Most potent uh, anti-pseudomonal penicillin. No, not imipenem, remember. Imipenem is not penicillin. I will teach you later. Yes. Piperacillin, that is right. Pi para slain. Pi para slain, that's good. And then there are others like, yes, Pi para slain is there. Then there's Ticarcelin. Have you heard of Ticarcelin? Carcelin. And then there is Azlocelin. Have you heard of it? Azlocelin, Mesloslin. Mesloslin, so piparslin, ticarslin, azloslin, mesloslin, and of course you should not forget carbenicillin. 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 In one book they have mentioned a beautiful way to remember. They say pseudomonas are really very, very tricky. And we should send the James Bond to fight with the pseudomona. And you know James Bond goes with his special car. They have special unusual type of gadgets. It is a special car, carbenicillin. Then it has a special pipe, which is like a pipe bomb to destroy the enemy. So, piperacillin. And then it has a biological weapon. Tick. Special tick which can go to the enemy and damage. Ticarcillin. So, anti pseudomonal penicillins are like James Bond penicillins. They are having a car, they are having a tick and they are having a pipe. Special gadgets. Carbenicillin, ticarcillin, and piperacillin. Piperacillin is like a pipe bomb in a pipe lot of TNT dose. So that is the most potent. Potent mean 
uh, it is able to destroy the bacteria even at low doses. Is that right? In my lecture, potent mean this here, right? So this is the most potent. If you forget which one is out of the most potent, just look where is the P? Paparaslin. Most powerful. Is that right? Then there is Tikarslin and there is Carbenislin. Now these are our supermodel penicillins. And out of them they also need some special protection. Especially, you know, car needs special care. Tick needs special care. But pipe, pipe is a simple thing. You don't care for that. So with them, we send the bodyguard. With Tikarslin, Tikarslin, we give clavulonic acid. What we give? Clavulonic acid. So that is this if bacteria is producing penicillin hazes, and if the supermodel is attacked, bodyguard is there. So what is this? Carbenis, uh, sorry, ticarsaline, tick with clavulonic acid. And when ticarsaline with clavulonic acid is given, the this drug or this combo is coming in the market with which name? Yes, who will tell me the name of this combo? Tymentin. Have you heard of it? Okay. okay, you will hear sometimes in your life. Right? If you pursue your career in the medicine. Tymentin, right? And then, other drug which is also very sensitive, Ticarsaline, and sorry, sorry, you have to correct it. Piperacillin also has protection. Yes, we have to correct our concept. Ticarsaline has a protection and Piperacillin has protection and protection with piperacillin is sulbactam so why not tazobactam we have to put tazobactam also somewhere so basically here it is tazobactam right what is it tazobactam and this combination piperacillin with tazobactam yes piperacillin with tazobactam what is this combination called piperacillin zosin Zo, sen. Anyway, let me repeat it again. We don't need to be super intelligent to understand penicillins and their classification. It's so simple that penicillins are basically one of the group of beta lactam antibiotics, right? And penicillins natural. Penicillin G and penicillin V. Penicillin G was intravenously used, and penicillin V can be used orally. And both of them are like housewife with moderate weight. And with moderate weight, they can kill a lot of gram positive and few gram negative. Especially, they can kill gram positive cocci, gram positive bacilli with few gram negative cocci, but no gram negative bacilli. Then we made them very fat. Grandmothers less effective, right? So only anti staphylococcal, right? What were these? very very narrow spectrum where our chain become very big so they become very heavy so action is lost on the most of the gram negative but with heavy chain they protect their beta lactam ring so they can at attack even against those staphylococci which produce penicillin agents they were called anti staphylococcal penicillins examples were methicillin which is not used these days nephicillin which produces nephritis and neutropenia also other problems which we will talk later. And then there were cloxacillin and oxacillin, dicloxacillin and related drugs. Then we came to, we want something smart. Model antibiotics, which was smart, which could slip through porins. So gram positive and negative both. Extended spectrum. Moxicillin and ampicillin. But because they are too smart, too much exposed, they are vulnerable to attacks. So we sent them with bodyguard like clovulonic acid and sulbactam. Is that right? Then we made super smart. For which drug, for which type of bug especially? Pseudomonas. Either we think, either they have very, very narrow porins or they have very few porins or some people say practically they don't have porin. Right? For pseudomonas we may send super models. What are those? Yeah, we send the James Bond with a special piperacillin, ticarsaline and carbenicillin. Is that right? And he has special protection for the ticarsaline, clavulonic acid, and with piperacillin, tazobactam. And there are other drugs also like azlosaline and mazlosaline. All of them are anti-sodomonal pencilin. Is there any question here? 
let's have a break